Welcome to Iron Reviews, the show where I review Marvel and DC Comics, and today I review Batman issue 1. The con begins with a flight coming into Gotham, and a passenger looks out and sees a perspective of Gotham City. We go elsewhere as we see Batman and Commissioner Gore meet up to talk about the raid on Fort Marshall. Gordon tells Batman the culprits got away with three surface-to-air missiles, and tells Batman some of his cop buddies stumbled on a Cobra cell an hour ago, finding two of the missiles, but one of the culprits got away with the third missile. The conversation is interrupted by the airplane being shot down by a missile, and Gordon tells Batman they need to stop it, but Batman has already left, and Gordon prepares to leave too. Batman calls up Alfred, and Alfred says that the plane is going to crash in Cane Plaza. This will kill a bunch of people if Batman can't stop it. He tells Alfred to call up the Justice League and see if anyone responds, hoping that Superman or Lantern will respond to the call and help him with this. Unfortunately, no one responds to the call, and they're, they're handling with other problems, but Batman says that's fine, and he's going to save the city and stop the crashing airplane. He calls up Duke to help Batman with this, and Duke is wondering if he should get out there with him, but Batman just needs to... Duke to get him day on it on the plane and send it to the Batmobile. Duke tells Batman that he will need to make a jump by Robinson Bridge if he ever wants to get to that plane. When he gets to the bridge, he sees that he can't use Batmobile to get there, so he uses the rocket ejector seat in the Batmobile to fly him up into the plane's location. Gorin calls up Batman, telling him that the plane is crashing at Kane Plaza and they're starting to evacuate everyone in that area. But Batman says that that doesn't need to happen. What he's actually going to do is push the plane to the Gulf of Black Gate. On the plane we see a passenger freaking out that they're going to die that they're in gotham and in any other city or town a superman or green lantern would just catch them out of the sky but they're in gotham who's going to catch them out in this city we go outside the plane where we see batman attaching two rocket propellers at the bottom of the two main wings and alfred is going to control the rockets so they can get them to the gulf of black Egg. he successfully does it and alfred gets to control the rockets and even quotes that they just made a new bat plane they fly besides buildings and make it to the gulf alfred says that batman did it, but he wants to tell him something. He is going the way to the Gulf, and Batman will have saved thousands of people, and he will have saved the city, but Batman needs to stay in place to navigate the location if he wants to do it correctly. The passengers will be fine, but Alfred says it will be impossible to survive the force he'll be exposed to when he lands. Batman knows, and he has prepared messages for everyone, and tells Alfred if Duke wants to continue his training. He tells him to recommend Dick Grayson, and says he will. Batman asks Alfred if this w will be a good death, if his mom and dad will be proud of him, and Alfred says yes, that'll be, they will be very proud of what he has done. And as the plane is about to make a crash in the water, it goes back up and wonders if that was Clark. But as the comic ends, Batman sees two new heroes helped him. The two heroes say that they are Gotham and Gotham Girl, and it's an honor to meet Batman tells Batman this is their city and they will save it. Batman issue 1 was a very interesting issue and a good start to the series. This is a book that will get people hooked into reading Batman and this introduces you to some main players like Gorn, Alfred, and Duke and even some new characters like Gotham and Gotham Girl. Now is this a book that's better or even good as Scott Snyder's first issue? Well, no, I mean, this issue is good and even great, but it has some flaws. For example, the art. Now, it isn't a major flaw. I mean, I think it's good modern art, but sometimes I feel like it looks weird and in your face. I kind of don't know how to explain it, but it's still good art. Also, Batman didn't really fight any bad guys in this issue. Now, like the art, this isn't a major problem, but it's kind of mostly what Batman does. He fights Crook, he solves mysteries, all that. But like I said, not really a big problem. I bet it'll get better in the next issue. It was cool to see Batman do a thing that normally Superman would do. But let's go back to the pros. I, like I said, this was an exciting start to Tom King's Batman. It really does feel like Batman, him trying to figure out what to do and willing even to sacrifice his life to save thousands. And it was pretty cool to see Batman do that. Also, it was a nice part in the airplane where the guy said in any other city, someone like Superman would catch them in the sky. But here, who do they have to save them? This issue also asks a question. With a world with Flash, Superman, and Wonder Woman, do we really need Batman? Besides, at the end of the issue, we did see Batman would have died if it weren't for the two heroes that possess Superman-like abilities. Also, I didn't point out during the recap, but a shadowy person was looking over a dead Cobra goon and talked about time. I wonder who that is. Overall, great issue. And interesting issues as well, with good art and good story. I give this an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Iron Reviews. And check out my Twitter at IronHulk018. I'm August, and until then...